been in school here for two, we won't let him for two and a half months. It's not a redshirt freshman. He's right now a starting quarterback. Danny McManus, who was number one, got injured. Looks like he's out for the year. Eric Thomas, who's number two, has been hurt off and on and has a little problem throwing the football. Kurt uh, Coker, who's more of a backup quarterback than as a starter, uh, is, is healthy and ready to go. But Chip Ferguson is a guy that we think that right now is our strongest quarterback that can direct our football team, and we're going, we're going with him. And when Ferguson gets the call, he goes to Hassan Jones, potentially one of the country's most explosive wide receivers. The Gamecocks are looking to start the final chapter of the 1985 season on a winning note. And Florida State is ready to go on the warpath at Tallahassee. An ESPN CFA showdown up next. Tallahassee, Florida, Doak Campbell Field, South Carolina, and Florida State, our CFA Saturday night game of the week. And good evening to you, everyone. I'm Jim Simpson. Very quickly, this is what Bobby Bowden was just talking about in all of those quarterbacks that he has had to use, four of them since this season began. He started out with McGannis, and Danny went three games before he got hurt. Kirk Coker came in in the fourth game against Kansas. That was pulled out by a freshman, Ferguson. McManus returned, and then it became Thomas, last year's starter for two, and then last week, Chip Ferguson, the freshman, against Miami. Bobby Bowden does have problems, Paul McGuire, but so does South Carolina in the injury column. Joe Morrison, a year ago, this time, had maybe two major injuries to his starters on his football team in South Carolina. Now, this year, Joe Morrison is lucky to find two starters that are healthy. He is had so many problems with injuries, Jim, and it's really sad. Beginning of this week, there were three of his four starting running backs were injured. Now, we may not see those guys tonight, or maybe only one of them, but he has had his problems, and when you have to go back into depth, you've got a problem. Well, remember also that South Carolina losing tonight, they're out of the bowl picture, and Florida State has to win tonight to stay in the major bowl picture. Paul and I will come back, but let us now go back to George Graham. Thank you very much, Jim and Paul. And while there is a shortage of running backs on that South Carolina Gamecock squad, I'll tell you, there are a couple of running backs today that had major days in college football. The state is right around the corner. We'll be taking a look at the Gamecocks after we pause for this timeout. Joe Morrison has a knack of rebuilding programs, and that's exactly what he has done at South Carolina. It's Florida State tonight, and it may be the best team they have faced this year. They have Navy and Clemson. Both of them are home, but this one is on the road. Let's go back to Paul. The fact is that no team should look ahead in a, in a football season, but South Carolina, is, it's vital for them to win this football game. They must win this one, the next one, the next one, Jim, because if they lose tonight, they may be out of the bowl picture completely. Well, the team that beat them last week was North Carolina State, and North Carolina State upset Virginia today. George will be back in just a moment. Defensive coaches make no mistake about it. Bobby Bowden is a man who has lived on offense during the course of his career. He's produced exciting football. He is football at Florida State. He has gained legendary status there as a fine football coach. The Seminoles, no doubt, come into this game with the kind of offense that can open things up rapidly. They usually do it. But Bobby Bowden has had the quarterback problem we alluded to earlier all season long. And he knows that's going to be part of his philosophy of tonight's encounter. I'm one of those coaches that thinks everything is built around the quarterback. That's just the way I believe of, of football is. And uh, Danny McManus was our starting quarterback for the first four ball games. And we were undefeated as long as he was there. But he, he's been injured. He's out for the year. And then we came in with uh, Kurt Coker, who did a good job. But really, uh, I've been keeping him more as a uh, backup quarterback uh, because of his limitations. But he's a good leader and a good, uh, you know, he can save games for you. 
Uh, I don't put him in positions to go out and take games, however. And then Eric Thomas, who uh, should be having a great year, uh, has been hampered by his inability to throw the football because of his shoulder problem. So then we've gone ahead and gone with Chip Ferguson, a freshman from Spartanburg, South Carolina. He's uh, about 6'2", about 210 pounds, and he's got a lot of courage. He ain't afraid. <laughs> you know, most freshmen would be afraid. I would if I was a freshman. But he's, he's, the kid seems to be fearless. He took some hits last week that most quarterbacks can't handle. And it didn't, he didn't bat an eye. So he can throw the ball good. And uh, right now, we feel like he is the best quarterback we have, and we're going to bring him along. I mean, it's important for me because that's where I'm from, South Carolina. And um, this game is big for our season. We just came off a depressing loss, and we need something to jack us back up for the next last two ball games and then send us on to a bowl game. The thing where South Carolina did a great job on us last year, but anybody's ever done, is disguising their coverages. Last year, they must have bluffed us into three interceptions by making it like they were going to blitz. We checked off to a pass. They ran back out of their uh, uh, package and intercepted the ball. So this year, we're determined not to let that happen again. Now, we've worked hard on it. I hope it doesn't. Bobby Bond likes to throw the football, but remember that Michigan rushed for over 300 yards against South Carolina. Georgia rushed for over 300 yards, too. So we'll see how this one develops. Let's go back to the ball game. Well, George, as you well know, as we come back to Tallahassee, Florida, if you listen to coaches, you may not find out anything. If you listen to Bobby Bowden and Joe Morrison before this game as they talked to Paul and me, you would think we're going back to the days of the scrum. Yale, Harvard of 1885 or something, because they're simply going to run the ball, they say. Not true. <laughs> Not true. Are you kidding? Bobby Bowden's Florida State team, Jim, they're going to run a few plays, but I can guarantee you it's going to be in the air more times than it's on the ground. On the other hand, South Carolina... In order for the South Carolina to win this football game, they must be able to run the football and run it effectively. And remember last year when they upset Florida State, they threw the ball only nine times. They were able to keep the ball on the ground. That is our matchup for the night. It is Florida State looking for the major bowl. Four bowl make people are here. Here comes the South Carolina team. They've got to win tonight or forget a bowl of any kind. They're four and four upset by North Carolina State last week. And of course, State today upset Virginia also. But here comes the hometown favorites. These are the Seminoles of Florida State. Six and two. They beat Nebraska. They are a team to be reckoned with. They've lost to Auburn. They've lost to Miami. And there is Renegade with Chief Osceola aboard. The mascot of Florida State. And we'll be right back with tonight's game. Here in Campbell Stadium as the Renegade with Chief Osceola aboard come out and put the flaming spear at midfield. Then the balloons go up. And that's the kind of situation that Joe Morrison and his Gamecocks find themselves in. A very heated up Tallahassee Seminole territory area led by Bobby Bowden who vows tonight they've got to win and he says he's going to run the football. Bowden's team won the toss but have elected to receive the second half kickoff. And so Florida State will kick it off and this in itself is a story because Barry Barco right there who kicked off last year and this year has not been kicking off well and so they will give him a chance to kick off. A chance to kick off. Deep or Sterling Sharp on your left, and Harden Brown number 80 on your right. Brown back after an injury in the second game. Both of the men deep for South Carolina are speedsters, and the South Carolina return team is a good return team. They average better than 20 yards per return of a kickoff. Barco wants to get it deep, but he's not going to get it deep. That's going to be Harden out at the five-yard line. And Harden only gets up to the 15-yard line. A fine play made right there by number 48 in your picture, and that was David Palmer, a reserve linebacker. Out on the field comes Mike Cole. The all-everything out of that Veer offense, the quarterback who's rushed the ball more than anybody else. In the backfield with him will be Thomas Dendy, who had 113 yards against Florida State last year, number 31, and Kevin White, number 6. Haygood and Raynard Brown are out, and Anthony Smith is doubtful, all with ankle injuries. Cool one wide receiver and sharp the other. And checking off the line is Mike Cole, first down from the 15. That is Hold carrying the football as he does most of the time. And Hold is hit hard by Greg Newell, the free safety. Quarles, Carpenter, Burton, Poinsett, and Hill, and that's the makeshift 
Well, that's the right front four there for Florida State. It is Florida, uh, for uh, South Carolina. It is Florida State that has the problem on offense. Isaac Williams, 45. Todd Stroud, 71. Gerald Nichols, 79, the front three. Gray, 65. Jones, 55. McGowan, the leading tackler, 38. Dax, 84, are the linebackers. It is second down at about 18 to 17. Here's Mike Hold back to throw. And he throws out here complete. And it is complete to the tight end, Danny Smith, number 41. Mayhew, 32. Sanders, two, making a start tonight. That's a freshman starter. Are the corners. Shiver, one strong safety, is a freshman. And Newell, the free safety, is a sophomore. Now, the ball is at the 24, and it is third down. And a short two yards to go. Noise a factor. Hold loves to carry the ball. Flags are down, and it may be that there's a five-yard penalty for the lay of game. The flags went down when the, when the ball was snapped, Jim, which which automatically means the ball will come back, and they'll take they have to take the five-yard penalty. Terry Monk, our referee. Whoops, that's a legal motion. That is not too much time. So it will be third down and about six. As we said, Jeff, Terry Monk is our referee. The linesman is Jim Mahan. Wayne Kieran's the field judge, the back judge Virgil Valdez, the umpires Bob Welch, line judges Mel Molman, Wilson well, Gozier is the side judge, and the clock operators Bob Albertson, and they'll step off five yards here. The five to be stepped off by the referee, of course, Terry Monk. We have a dead ball foul. Ball start. They have run the ball a couple of times, but Holt has put the ball in the air to his tight end, Danny Smith. It is now third down and nearly seven yards to go. Holt dropping straight back. In trouble. He's a scrambler. Gets the ball out here, and it is not intercepted as they thought it might be. Stanley Shiver, the freshman strong safety, made a dive for it, number 37, and South Carolina will have to kick it away. And if Shiver doesn't touch the football, Jim, Sanders, number two, has an interception. Back goes Deion Sanders, and Tom O'Connor, who's a line drive punter, will kick the ball away. That normally means you're going to get a return, and Sanders will have a chance to return here. But look at the men around that ball. That in itself is the story of South Carolina. They are quick to the ball. They fail to move the ball. Now, FSU will try when we come back. Brought to you by Colt, imported for Dodge and Plymouth, built by Mitsubishi in Japan. By the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by the financial professionals at Payne Weber Incorporated. All of that, Victor Floyd carried the football for four yards. It is second down and six at the 47-yard line. Chip Ferguson is the quarterback, the freshman. Floyd is back there with Cletus Jones, number 42, the fullback. Darren Holloman and Hassan Jones are the starting wide receivers, but Gaynor and Bryant also bring in plays. Another running play by Victor Floyd, and this time the quick to the ball defense of South Carolina is there. Led by their cheerleader, Tony Guyton, number 93. Davis Fitz, uh, Fitzgerald Davis is 53. Tom Chaikin, 94. Willie McEntee is 88. That's the front four. Kenneth Robinson, 84. Glenn Peacock in the middle, 52. Charles Hill, 85. The linebackers. Chris Major on one side, number 13. Gary Dunlap on the other, number 29. The safeties, Joe Brooks, 23. And Greg Philpott, 25, with six interceptions. It is still third down. And almost seven. As Floyd lost a half a yard. Well, here's the first pass by Chip Ferguson. Across the middle, it is low and caught by Hassan Jones, but shy of the fourth down spot that he's got to get to to make it a first down. He's just down to the 43-yard line. The ball has to cross the 41 to get a first down. Interesting situation for Florida State. Third down and long, Jim, and they went with two tight ends in the ball game and only one wide receiver who was Jones. On fourth down and a couple to go, Bobby Bowden is going to play it safe. And then Lewis Berry averaging nearly 43 yards a kick. And Berry, this one may find the end zone. South Carolina hopes it does, but it only gets down to the 10-yard line. And another bad field position start for the Gamecocks when we come back here in the first quarter. Started at the 15, now we'll start from the 11. 
No score. Early first quarter. 11:26 left. I think you can see the quickness on these plays defensively and offensively of South Carolina. Here's Mike Holdback, and he's going to throw, and that's a dangerous pass out there. The ball is caught out there by Sharp. Now they say he did not catch it, and that's a wise thing to do. Georgia upset Florida today, 24 to 3. There goes number one Florida in the AP poll. Penn State trailed Cincinnati, but beat them 31 to 10. Ohio State buried Northwestern. Iowa State found Nebraska, the tough team, in a top five team, 49 to nothing. Air Force still unbeaten after 10 games. Oklahoma buried Missouri, still winless. Hold on second down, and there's a look in pattern, and the ball is incomplete. Intended for Harden Brown, who has just come back in after being out many games with a broken bone in his foot. Jim, remember, you talked about at the beginning they were short on running backs, but not only can they run, this is Dendy right here. Good block on the outside on Jacks, number 84, who was the linebacker coming in. Now, here's the throw by Hold, and this ball hits Brown right in the hands. Should have caught it, almost intercepted by Sanders. I'm just wondering, Paul, whether it's field position that has kept the ball out of the hands of Thomas Dendy, their leading runner for the last three years. Hold throwing back down here and throws behind is back Kevin White. And White is put down by Stanley Shiver, number 37. And they'll have to kick the ball away again. Did Joe Morrison say they're going to run? That's right. They ran one play. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you said at the beginning, Jim, don't always believe the coaching staff when they tell you what they're going to do. Not only that, he has been throwing from a start at the 15 and the 11. And so now Tom O'Connor comes back in, and Deion Sanders hopes that he can get a head start again. Well, they've got 10 men, excuse me, Jim, up on the line, Florida State. They went after the last punt. It looks like they're going after this one. O'Connor from his end zone. Here they come. Here they come. And he gets it away. Gets it away high, too. Backing Sanders up. That's a good punt inside the 35-yard line. Fumbled by Sanders inside the 30-yard line. Back to the 40, and no place to go. They really got him out of that with that good punt. But they're inside the 40-yard line. No score here early in the first quarter. Jim, actually the sign of a, of a good punter. When you can stand in your end zone, knowing the heat's coming, 10 guys, and get a rocket like this, O'Connor, he's a barefoot kicker, and look, and he just eye down, toe down, and he rockets the ball, and they know it when they hit it well. They can just feel it. Here's some other scores. Miami came from behind to beat Maryland. Get it right. Look at that. 59 to nothing, Iowa. Purdue lost to Michigan. 47 to nothing on a shutout. First down. Ferguson still has the football. Rolling out. Looking to get away if he can. Flag goes down. Could be holding. Puts the ball down. And oh, the official is the man who interfered there. And they'll get on him. may be called for holding, but it was the official who got in the way. Jim, this is where the quarterback, Ferguson, is trying to roll out. Now, number 64, Jamie Dukes, is the man that's going to go out with him. Now, watch this. He's got his block there at the line of scrimmage. When Ferguson goes beyond, there's nothing that Jamie Dukes can do but hold to save his quarterback. And that is a good hold, if there's such a thing. Watch the official down here. This is my replay. Look at that. <laughs> Get him out of the supposed to be in there. But he was. That was intended for Herb Gaynor. Now they move the ball back inside the 30-yard line. Well, you said South Carolina. They're holding Florida State. Still first down. They're smaller. They're the fire ants on defense. And they need a little bit of help back there, Jim. So the official just stepped in and knocked the ball away. Like Texas A&M, the 12th man on the field. Yeah. Hassan Jones is wide to the right. And Ferguson on first down has a lot of time to throw and pumps it and pumps it right to Hassan Jones. Goes across the 35 and knocks out of bounds near the 25-yard line. He is a big play man, averaging better than 22 yards, and he got much better than that this time. He got about 45 yards. This may be a freshman quarterback, Chip Ferguson, but I'm going to tell you something. He puts this ball right on Hassan Jones' hands. Watch this. And he waits till he clears the linebackers. Here comes Hassan Jones right there. The ball is perfectly thrown right on target. Phil Pot, no chance to make the interception. Dunlap runs him out of bounds, but they have a first down at the 25-yard line. Only five minutes and one second have gone by in this first quarter, and Florida State on the big 45-yard play is threatening. Hand off, and there goes Victor Floyd. 
still on his feet, first down inside the 10-yard line. Victor Floyd. Jim, this is a, this is kind of a delayed draw here. Now watch. You see Floyd. He goes back, steps to his right, and he goes back to the left. The blocking on the inside is absolutely perfect. They get good pursuit. Tomberlin is, is number 72, is a right guard that pulled out and made the trap, and it was perfect. First and goal to go for the Seminoles. Darren Holloman this time goes wide to the right. He is the only man set apart from the line of scrimmage. High formation. That means they're going to run the ball. Watch for that. They do run the ball, and the flag is down. South Carolina offside. Ball carrier was Cletus Jones, but South Carolina was offside. Florida State trying to break early on Joe Morrison, as usual, dressed in black. The coach of the year last year for his 10 and 2 record. Lost a game to Navy and then lost a game in the Gator Bowl. You know, talking to Joe, and it's not it's not making excuses either, and, and he he never would, not that man. But all the injuries this year as compared to last year. Offside, defense. First and goal to go, and again, Holloman goes wide to the right. And here comes Floyd, and he is knocked down, and the ball may be loose. South Carolina reacting as though the ball is loose, but Victor Floyd obviously still has the ball as he gets up. Peacock was there. Hill was there. By the way, Frank Gifford said about Joe Morrison. To the right of the screen, and we can see if we can see the holding penalty. And that's it right there. Tackled, isn't it? Oh, yeah. McGinney is... is uh, I think the man it's Mark Salva. Help. I thought it was Salva. But he was holding McGinney. Salva being forced to play tackle oh. tonight. The up man has got the ball, and that is Holloman. And Holloman doesn't get too much. Davis was offside. They're really eager tonight, South Carolina. The flag is down for the third consecutive time. So mm -hmm. You know, Jim, this is our fourth first down in this drive from the same spot. Not from the same spot, but the same first down. It was first and five. First and ten, then first and five. Then first and 15. Now it's first and ten again. Follow him again, the man wide to the right. First down, goal to go. Now they give it to Victor Floyd coming this way. And Floyd gets down to about the six-yard line, dragged down by Jerry Dunlap, the cornerback on that side. A junior out of Lorraine, Ohio, who was a running back until spring of this year. Still no score. 8.15 to go, first quarter. Florida State has had a number of opportunities and a number of penalties against South Carolina and Florida State down inside the 10-yard line. And Jerry Dunlop that time played the corner very well because the play was designed to run inside at the tackle. Victor Floyd saw that it was blocked, moved to the outside, and the corner stayed out there. Now we have two wide receivers, but we have an eye formation, which usually means run for Florida State. And they're going to run as Harleman carries the ball. And he is put down immediately. And it looked as though Glenn Peacock, number 52, is the man who put him down, right? The middle linebacker. And now it is third down and goal to go. That's the thing they tell us. If you watch Florida State and they're in the eye, 99%, maybe 99.9%, maybe 100%, they will run. If they split their backs, look for the pass or the draw or the screen. <laughs> That's not too hard to defense that, is it? Well, now they've got their back split. Let's see if we are right. Pass, draw, or screen. Third down. And he's going to pass. And he throws out there and bumped out of bounds across the way is Pat Carter that they say it's a touchdown. Carter got into the end zone. Chip Ferguson, as he gets more experience, will learn that he can throw this pass a little bit sooner than he threw it because Pat Carter was open as soon as he broke from the line of scrimmage. They ran, I think it was Jones in motion, brought him inside. Carter goes back to the outside. The safety never stayed with him. And at that time, Chip Ferguson held the ball just a little bit too long, almost cost him the touchdown. Just about a 70-yard drive. Derek Schmidt comes in to add the extra point. And he adds the extra point, but what's new? That's his 72nd in 72 tries as a kicker for Florida State. Jim, on this rollout now, here's what I'm talking about. Ferguson's coming out. He can throw now. And he's got Carter open, but he waits, and it gives the safety time to get up on him. And when that happens, 
Wow. Was that, well, that a touchdown? Was, that, that, that's close to a touchdown. Was, Bob, that, was that a touchdown? Look close to me. We'll come back in a moment. Kick off. 7.07 to go, first quarter. Seminoles looking to atone for last week's loss to Miami. And, of course, South Carolina at 4-4. Four and four. They need this. Again, Barker with a short kick, and this one may go out of bounds and does. And so now they're moving back five yards. And Barco may find himself not kicking off before this half is over or this game is over unless he gets more foot into the ball. Well, here, here's the replay again, Jim, and it's a question of whether the ball gets over the goal line or not. Here comes Ferguson to the outside. He's going to throw the ball to Pat Carter. Major number 13 comes up. Now, does the ball cross the goal line? The ball is in his left hand. The official is there. There it looks like it crosses the goal line. I hope so. He was there. He wouldn't lie. But he, now, on Barco, on, on this kickoff, Jim, the last kickoff, he put the ball on the right hash mark, and I guess they, what they wanted him to do is get it, get enough, enough height and kick it to his left into the left-hand corner. But it just so happened that the ball went out of bounds. Now they're going to make him kick the ball down the field. From a 35-yard line. And again, the deep men are sharp and brown. Sharp to your left, brown to your right. Here is a 70-yard drive put together by Florida State before the comedy of penalties inside the 10-yard line. And finally, they threw the ball Ferguson to Carter for the first and only score of the game. Marco kicking off. A very short. Very short. One of the up men will take that. And come back out as Anthony Smith returns it. One of the running backs who is hobbled with an ankle, as you can tell, as he goes off. One of their three. Here's some other scores. Number 10, Oklahoma State over Kansas State by 32 points. Arkansas came from behind to knock off Baylor, which had been undefeated in the Southwestern Conference. That means Paul and I'll be down in College Station. Texas A&M and Arkansas next Saturday night. Auburn buried East Carolina, but Bo Jackson only played about a half in that one. Reversing and look out. In deep trouble. Fred Jones inside linebacker number 55 made the stop. And South Carolina, this is the best field position of the night. But that was not a good first down play. Now take a hole, look at hole. It's a reverse pivot, and that gives Jones, number 55, enough time to get through the hole and make the tackle. No one blocked him. That was Smith, number 41, who's a tight end that was supposed to come back inside and block that linebacker. Didn't do it. Second down and 13 to go now. Demney still has not touched the ball. Hole throws, has his man, but it is incomplete. Intended for Eric Poole, a split end and a senior and a big play man, averaging nearly 23 yards per play. That would have been a first down. Jim, Eric Poole went across that middle and did not look back at the ball. I don't know if we could see it on the replay. Hole is looking at Poole. He sees him coming across, and Poole is looking at more or less the sec secondary man instead of the football. Hit him right in the hands. It is third down and 13 to go. Well, the Gamecocks will have to give it up once again. Sharp goes wide to the left, and Poole is out to the right. And Hole, being pursued, gets the ball away, underthrown to Dendy. And Dendy would have been wise not to catch that ball because that's a loss of six more yards and makes it third down, uh, fourth down and 19. When you don't have a strong offensive line and you're playing against a bigger defense like they are, that's a tough play. It's a fake draw screen, and it just takes too much time to throw. There's Deion Sanders again, and here comes Tom O'Connor again to kick the ball away. And again, 10 Seminoles up on the line of scrimmage. before I snap gets the ball away some hang time on this one Sanders does not call for the fair catch and he's going to be dragged down inside the 40 yard line 533 to go first quarter seven of Florida State leads South Carolina and now the game touch defense has to hold that was a long drive the last time territory from the 37 yard line first down Seven nothing. The Seminoles. Two wide receivers are out. And not much there. Well, Paul, on occasion they have run the ball. Each team. Now they say it's a fumble. Are they saying that? And they're saying that South Carolina got it. Not much there. But when they get up, the ball belongs to South Carolina. You know what that man's thinking of right now? 
last year's turnovers 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 the ball was run by Cletus Jones and Robinson came up with the ball Florida State had nine turnovers last year Paul they were all in the second half against South Carolina all right there goes Cletus Jones up inside and that ball is on the ground you couldn't see because of the, the pile up inside but Robinson is the man looked like he made the tackle all right up and I tell you that's not the way to start the last time Dendy had the ball thrown to him it was low for a six yard loss and this time he has handed the ball for the first time to run it and he has stacked up right at the line of scrimmage the ball is inside the Florida State 40 yard line at the 39 as they go looking for that tight end again Pitch out to Dendy. Dendy, good little move there, but they're all over him, and he's back at the line of scrimmage. And so it's going to be third down with about 10 to go. Dendy drew a crowd, didn't he? Shiver was over there. Daryl Gray was over there, 65, a linebacker. And the officials, was there a flag, Paul? Because they're talking to the officials. Yes, there is a flag right at the 40 yard line at the, at the referee's feet. So it is Terry Monk drop face by mask. face mask. That'll help. Tell you what, South Carolina has generated nothing tonight on its own on offense. The biggest play they could have had, it was in Poole dropped the ball over the middle for what would have been a first down. But Hold has been harassed. Dendy's carried the ball rarely. But maybe they'll come alive, but that's a good Florida State. Oh, face team. mask against Florida State. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Second down and five to go from a 34 yard line. Thank you, folks. Making it for the ESPN signs. Here's hold. And down he goes at the 40 yard line. All over him. Led by Garth Jack. Daryl Gray says, I got the ball. And they're exchanging teams. So not only did he get sacked, but he lost the ball. Garth Jacks is in the backfield, and this ball comes out before they hit before hold hit, hit the ground, and it became Florida State's ball. This defense is tough. They sacked Testaverde of Miami seven times last week. They got to move the chains. They forgot to move the chains. The ball chains are still back. You're right. The other way. Now they they're moving. Attaboy. The ball is at the 39-yard line, 7 0 Florida State, 427 to go first quarter, and the Seminoles in complete charge throughout this game thus far. And there's Victor Floyd. Victor Floyd has the first down. Victor Floyd has much more than the first down. Floyd is inside the 30. Floyd will be knocked out of bounds by Chris Major. But not until he got down to the five. First and goal to go. about 62 yards big plays the long pass to Hassan Jones and now the run by Victor Floyd number 91 Ricky Daniels misses a play right there in the backfield and then Victor Floyd just watch his running it's not so much blocking downfield Hassan Jones gets just a piece of someone that's all he had to do and Chris Major saves the touchdown five carries 78 yards for Victor Floyd first down and goal to go Five. Brooks and they may have jumped again. From a dead ball, dead ball false start ball. on the offense, still first down. down. Ricky Daniels is playing some defensive end right now. He was not scheduled to play, number 91, but is playing and is in there now for South Carolina. Now he's just gone out. Discovered he was in, he is going out. First down goal to go from the 10. First man through, and that is Holloman, and that is a touchdown. Tanner Holloman, they took the fake of Chip Ferguson on the handoff toward Victor Floyd, and Holloman just went straight ahead. Jim, it looked like no one even saw him get the football because they didn't, no one reacted to him until he got to about the three-yard line, and then Holloman was already on his way to the end zone for a touchdown. 
Yeah, he was some Here bold shots of being impressed tonight. Here they come right now. They give it to Holloman, and, and the line pulled out. It was, it's like a false trap. They pull out, and they don't even block that tackle at the hole. And quickly, Derek Schmidt adds the extra point. And with 4-10 to go, the Seminoles are off to a big lead, 14 to nothing, and looking very, very good. Thank you. South Carolina has not been able to move the football. Seminoles tough on defense and big play on offense. Next week, I remember Texas A&M, after beating SMU last week, and Paul and I were in College Station for that one, has this weekend, don't count out Baylor, don't count out Texas, and don't count out Arkansas or Texas A&M. Marco to kick off the ball again. 14 to nothing. And the Gamecocks at this moment look as though they're vastly overmatched. And when you've got their running backs, such as Reynard Brown and Ken Haygood, who didn't even suit up, and Anthony Smith, who's still limping, Dendy is their only real healthy back, Thomas Dendy, that they have. Here's the kickoff. And that is Sharp back there. He's got great speed, too, but he's dragged down as he gets to the 25-yard line, and there's another flag on the play. And the flag is way back at the 40-yard line, so they could have been offside on the kickoff. I guess they feel they can break it. But I tell you what, with Sharp and Harden Brown. Offside on the kicking team, re-kick. They have two extremely quick return men, and that's one of their strengths this year, returning kickoffs. Joe well, Morrison looking on, doesn't like what he sees so far. BYU, they've lost a couple times this year, setting up a shootout with the Air Force, knocked off Utah State 44 to nothing. And Alabama and LSU, the Southeast is still up for grabs. They tied each other 14 all when LSU, with eight seconds to go, missed a very short field goal attempt. Leon Sanders, we understand, has injured his wrist. He'd just been elevated to right cornerback, and he is a return man on punts. And he may not play again in this half. But now with the ball for the second time tonight, back at the 35 for Barry Barco. Remember last time he kicked up to about the 25 from the 35. This is better than that. And that is Sterling Sharp. Great speed. Up, oh, flag goes down again, folks, as Sharp gets across the 30-yard line. They look for a legal block down there, and they're going to get worse field position than what they would have had, Paul, had they done what you first suggested, and that is take the kick where it was. There's a legal block on the backup linebacker, David Johnson, number 97. Flip. So that will move it back. All right, listen, when we look at the touchdown again, Jim, the reaction is just not there for South Carolina. Here goes Holloman inside. The block, good block at the line of scrimmage, but the next man back there is a safety man. That's Phil Pot. He had no chance to stop him. So one block on a lineman, you never, ever saw another lineman nor a linebacker. Flipping against the receiving team during the run back. First down. Well, here goes South Carolina again with awful field position inside their own 12, almost back to the 11. Hey, Minus five total yards to 145 for Florida State. <laughs> That's a swing in it. Whoa, whoa. And now Dendy's got the ball, and Dendy's got a few yards. Picks up maybe four out to the 15-yard line. That's one of the biggest and most successful plays of the night thus far for South Carolina. You know, when we talk to the people at South Carolina, we're talking about we, we, we must be able to run the football against Florida State in order to beat them. And so far, they've done nothing but throw the football. How can you run, really sit back and think about running the ball, Jim, when you only have two healthy backs? And they're really zeroing in on Mike Hold a few times that he has carried the ball. And now this is White. He is there only because Haygood and Anthony Smith are injured. And he's tripped up by Terry Warren, a reserve linebacker out of Titusville, Florida, number 80. Had a brother, Rob, that played here and wore the same number, as a matter of fact. Now it is third down and about seven to go. Well, we'll see that man again, Tom O'Connor, to kick the ball away. They got Sharp one-on-one -on, -one on the outside on Williams, number 17. There's a safety blitz, but Hole gets the ball away to Danny Smith, his tight end. Danny Smith has got the big first down for South Carolina. They needed a big play. They get it out to the 33-yard line. Is that the backup free safety? Is Sanders, number 16, trying to cover the tight end, Smith? 
if that's the case, he just does he never gets close to him. Here comes Smith to the outside hole, puts this right on target. And look at Smith turns upside. That, that is, that's Sanders, number 16, who is the backup free safety, never got there. There's Mike Old, 4 of 8. Now that's Tracy Sanders who made that, not Deion Sanders who is out hurt. Now here comes Kevin White again, and White picks up five or six yards. That is an effective play. Paul McGowan puts him down, number 38. But Kevin White, a sophomore out of Charlotte, North Carolina, the ball carrier there, and gets the ball out to the 38-yard line. All right, look at Dendy is number 31. He's the outside man trying to get a block, and he's going downfield. That's all right. His block is there, but Paul McGowan, the inside linebacker, filled beautifully. Second down and five to go. 14 to nothing, Florida State, 2.15 to go, first quarter. Ball at the 38-yard line. Here is Dendy, and Dendy doesn't get much. It will be third down and about three yards to go. Down at the bottom, you can see getting up was Steve Gabbard, and now he is a freshman, a red shirt freshman, out of Concord, North Carolina, number 76. Bobby Loudon starting five through freshman tonight, and Joe Morrison with a very young and very injury riddled team. Here's Hold. He's got some time this time. And look out here. He's got Poole. And Poole's got the first down in Florida State territory. And now the Gamecocks begin to put some kind of drive together. They started, remember, back inside their 20 after the clipping penalty. And they moved it out to the 49 of South Carolina. You know, makes this play work. Watch what Hold does. He will look out here to his left, to the right of the screen. And now he comes back to Poole because Mayhew stayed way off. Gave him a chance to get open. They pick up another first down. That was a good read by the quarterback. That was Curtis Thomas who put him down. And here comes Dendy again. And Dendy's got some running room. And Dendy picks up six or seven yards down to the 42, 43 yard line. Put down by Warren again. As there are a lot of folks out there that are not the first stringers. Now we see Garth Jacks coming back out. He is a first stringer. Lenny Shavers comes in as the nose guard. Dendy's only carried the ball. Well, I didn't even think he'd carried the ball five times, but he has for 11 yards. And there is Cocky, the little game cock mascot. Now with something to root about. Second down and four to go. Hold out here. Hold looking, hold throwing, and that was for Harden Brown. With coverage there by Martin Mayhew, number 32. Jim, what a beautiful pass that Holt just made on a, to Harden Brown. And this ball goes between two people. Newell will be there. Mayhew will be there. But look at it. He sets up and fires this ball. Watch here. Right between the two defenders. Hits him in the hands. He gets a shot. But Mayhew in the back. And Brown drops the ball. Right there. It's between the two defenders. He couldn't have put the ball in a better place. Poole has dropped one over the middle. Now Brown drops one over the middle. It is third down on four. They got blitzes on, and that is Shiver again, the free safe, strong safety. He was blitzing last time when they found Danny Smith on the far side for a first down. This time, the blitz pays off, and here comes Tom O'Connor, the punter. Last half minute of the first quarter, which has been nearly all Florida State. The Gamecocks are showing some signs of coming alive. No one back. No one back. may cost them something inside the five. Don't let it bounce too far, folks. They won't. They'll put it down at the two. No one back as the quarter is over. Florida State on a pass to Carter and a run by Holloman. Lead 14 to nothing. That's the end of the first quarter. Squire in Tallahassee, 14 nothing Florida State as we begin the second quarter. An explanation of why Florida State had no one deep in just a moment. That is Hassan Jones. In motion, and Victor Floyd straight up the middle. How about that? Had them back at the two. They're out at the 20. And now Paul McGuire can tell you why they had nobody back on the punt that put them back on the two. Well, well we're going to take a, a look at this first of all. Let's look on this side of the field. Here, that's Duke 64 is going to get a good block, and in the tackle, Ionata comes down, and he blocks the inside to the linebacker. The hole is there, and there goes the first down, and that's Victor Floyd. Great run by Floyd. He keeps his feet. He might be able to break to the outside. Here they come again. I'll get to that in a minute, Jim. Okay, 95 yards already for Victor Floyd, and now they give the ball to the up man, and that is Cletus Jones, and he gets out to about the 24, and the flag goes down. Gee, we have had a lot of flags tonight. Too many in the first quarter. 
What, what, what happened on that last play with the South Carolina? It's a face mask against South Carolina. It's a five-yard penalty. But what happened is that South Carolina, what they're doing with their punt team, Jim, they're running them onto the field. And Joe Morrison, looking on, he didn't like what he's seeing. But they run the punt team onto the field so that Florida State can't get their punt return team onto the field. So they did the smart thing for Florida State instead of, send a, send a, a stent, instead of sending someone all the way back that was never back there before, the they just didn't send anyone. Just the defense. Still playing first down. First down with a yard to go. South Carolina, 10 penalties so far between them, South Carolina and Florida State. I want you to explain something to me. I, I need a rules explanation here in a moment. And there goes Victor Floyd again. is well over 100 yards now as he carries the ball out to the 43. Jim, look at the middle of the line. Dukes, Handley, and Tomberlin. They just do the do the blocking, get the line of scrimmage. They, they kick Fitzgerald Davis, number 53, out of the hole. Peacock, the, the middle linebacker, never gets there, and out comes Victor Floyd. 109 yards for Floyd and just seven carries. Just ball on the 44. Floyd again. Here comes more running room for Floyd. And another first down. Chris Major puts him down. My question to you, Paul McGuire, as the flag goes down again, is when they ran the ball and his face mask, right? Right. Okay, that is a penalty, right? Stays for five yards. Okay, but they gave him the length of the carry plus the five yards and called it still first down. Now, how do you do that? How do you gain four yards, have five tacked onto it, and still call it first down? Because it's at the point of where the where the face mask is. They take it from that point and they move the ball forward. From there. It was not a first down. So they get because of the penalty and the, and they get to replay the down again. So you get both yardage. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, you've explained it to me. I just explained it to myself, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Look at this big one against South Carolina. Not laughing at that. Because the Gamecocks are having a tough time. Dead ball. Dead ball. Personal foul against the defense. First down, First down. Wow, everything is going against South Carolina so far. They're down by 14. Joe Morrison's team has a long way to go, nearly three quarters. And this is a tough Florida State team. And don't you think they're not a little fired up after having lost in the fourth quarter to Miami? But then South Carolina lost in the fourth quarter to North Carolina State. Now they got a different running back in there. This is Keith Ross. A freshman has been returning kicks, and they like to get him in there because they think he is going to be some kind of football player. And he moves the ball down to about the 22-yard line. Well, Bowden, this is absolutely true. They are running the football now. Now, <laughs> that scares you just a little bit, doesn't it? South Carolina, 30 yards passing, and they feel they felt that they had to run the football. They haven't been able to do that. On the other hand, Florida State, they told us they were going to run the football, 93 yards in the first quarter. Alleman wide to the left. Dick Ferguson hands the ball off. And it gets inside the 20-yard line. That is Keith Ross again. The freshman of Newberry. He's 5'10, 179. Ross is does get hit in the backfield, Jim, but that doesn't slow him down. Jones is the fullback. He fake him up to the middle. They just block out Fitzgerald Davis, who gets trapped into the backfield. Peacock, who's the middle linebacker, had a shot at Ross and didn't make it. He picks up the first down. No, well, nope, they're going to measure. Keith Ross, Paul, signed with Florida in 1982 and was going to go to Gatorville over in Gainesville, but then he got an offer from the Phillies, played two minor league seasons of baseball, and said, I got lonely, came back to football, and instead came to Florida State. That's the first down for Florida State. And Keith Ross, the man with whom we spoke, is the man who got it. Ball is on the 17-yard line. 13 minutes, 9 seconds to go in the half. 14 to nothing. The Seminoles, and they are still moving the football. Ferguson has looked outstanding tonight and has not had to throw the ball that much. Hassan Jones, who caught a big 45-yard play pass, is way over to the left. And here's Keith Ross again. Keith Ross dragged down by Glenn Peacock, the middle linebacker, inside the 15-yard line. They're doing this with double tight ends and only one wide receiver, Hassan Jones, number 88. 
And you just can't get carried away and think, well, all they're going to do is run the football, run the football. But again, with the thing that you pointed out before, when they are in the I formation, they're going to run the football. They're telling you, we're running. Pete Patton goes in. Pat Carter, who got a touchdown pass, comes out at tight end. Jones wide to the left. Think run, remember? I formation. They give it to the up man, Cletus Jones. Flag goes down. Jones goes down inside the 10 with, I think, enough for the first down. But this also may be a penalty against South Carolina State. Jones, a senior out of Miami. You better not call him South Carolina State. Oh, I did? <laughs> you better not. Got Florida State and South Carolina. <laughs> I tell you what, Joe Morrison's team, what's that, three or four times they have been offside in their eagerness tonight to get the jump on the bigger Florida State team. Jim, they are quick, they are much smaller, and they know they have to get the jump. Joe is not happy at all with it. There are there are other factors that could you could take into consideration. Does all right, here's our penalties. We had a lot in the first quarter. Still second down. If the voice of the quarterback, if he's changing that, if he goes on a long count, sometimes the quarterback will get into a rhythm and go on one and go on one, and all of a sudden he's going to go on three or four. That throws the defense off. You know, they're showing no mercy because South Carolina last year up at Columbia defeated Florida State 38 to 26. Ferguson has only thrown three times, completed all three. And look at this throw, and that ball is caught. That's the tight end, Pete Pantano just came in. Two touchdown passes by Ferguson, both to a tight end. And are you ready? Out of the I formation. He threw. He threw out of the I formation. That'll make you think a little bit. Panton just gets out from the right-hand side of the screen. And you see Ferguson fake into the inside to Jones and then just steps up and pops. But take a look, there were people there. Great one-handed catch, falling back into the end zone. No chance for the defense to Bill Pot to get to him. Touchdown. And Derek Smith remains through perfect. 74 for 74 in his career, kicking extra points at Florida State. Chip Ferguson has quite a career, doesn't he? Here comes Panton, Jim Watts. He slides by the linebacker on the outside in this great one-handed catch. Just lets the ball drop down into his body. Phil Pot hits him in the back, but he's already scored. Everything coming up nifty in Seminole territory. 21 to nothing, and we've got 11.44 to go in the half. Now this time, Barco did not kick off. Smith did, and Harden Brown, the freshman, was told to keep it right there in the end zone. So Barry Barco lost his kickoff job to Derek Schmidt, at least for the moment. Panton, we can't see it on this replay, Jim, but he just slips out beyond the linebacker in front of the safety, and Ferguson just lobs the ball. Didn't try to fire it into him, just lobbed it up and let him go after it in a great one-handed catch. Great one-handed catch, considering he had not caught a touchdown before. Big thrill. Well, South Carolina had something going for themselves. Last time they had the ball, and looked at this. Now, here comes Michael. I thought for a moment he might even go out of a shotgun. And now he steps up under the center. Oh, good cut there to get some tough yardage. Newell came up to hit him head on. And there's some other folks down at the bottom, including Eric Williams. They rushed the ball six times. The seventh was the time they passed, and Panton caught it. And look at the yards. 97 yards was that drive, helped along by penalties of offside and face mask and holding. On the 24-yard line, second down and six, South Carolina. Hold has time, and the ball is batted right back at him. Is that Gabbard that did that? Didn't Number look 76. Like it. Wisconsin leads Minnesota 3-0 in the first quarter. And Stanford and Oregon State are seven all in the first quarter. Wasn't that an upset this afternoon out there when California bumped off Southern California? Third down and long, about six to go for South Carolina down by 21. Hold has a hole up the middle. And Hole has got the first down. Good runner, drag down, first down. Best run of the night for South Carolina. Felton Hayes came back to make the stop. Number 46, inside linebacker. 
when you know you're going to throw and you go back and they all just rush to the outside they want to keep hold in the pocket we know that that time the middle linebacker moved out too far Hayes was one of the inside linebackers made the tackle but holds it beyond the 42 yard line sharp to the right pool to the left first down hold on the pitch back and that is Kevin White who's knocked down what a play on that side no wonder he is happy. That is Alfonso Williams, a freshman. And he made the play fending off the block and knocking down Kevin White, but a flag is on the play. And South Carolina is walking backwards. That's because there's a holding penalty right at the plate. If you're going to hold a guy, make sure he doesn't make the tackle. Clipping, they're calling it. Flipping going out there. Let's see it. All right, look at Jim. When you're going to see Kevin White going to the outside, now here's the flip, but the block is to the right side of your screen. Watch here. There's the clip coming back to the inside. There's a clip by Prater, number 87, who is the tight end. Man, that is Alan Mitchell, who started a lot last year before Mike Hold, who used to be the warm up man, came in, and he is throwing out an old. He, if he's been asked to throw or whether he's just hoping that he gets in there. And they're going to mark off big yardage against South Carolina. That takes them back to the 27 yard line. They're flipping against the offense. Still first down. First down and a bundle to go. 25 yards. Something good happens. The runner hold and then something bad happens. The flipping penalty. And here's where you try to get just half of it back at a time. Don't try to get greedy. Audible. Up. Oh, Hold almost dropped the ball. Puts the ball up. Down here, and that's not going to be caught by the intended receiver who's throwing sharp. Jim Hold really got hammered. There was a blitz on from the outside, and I don't know if it was a strong safety, Williams, number 26, but just as he let go of the ball, he really took a shot. Remember what I said, Paul, that last year when South Carolina beat Florida State, they threw only nine times. Mike Holt has already thrown 12 times, and we've got 10 minutes to go in the first half of this game. Completed five. Well, they haven't really been able to run the ball. It was a busted play that Holt gained all the yardage. It was a pass play. Second down, 25. Holt back to throw again. Has some time. Now puts the ball out there, and the ball is caught across there by Poole, who runs out shy of the first down, but it is third down and about three. Got most of the 25 back. Jim, when you take a look at this from the wide secondary, now watch the linebackers. Right there at the 30, they're dropping back. See, everybody's blocking. The top left of your screen, you've got Poole on Mayhew all by himself. Everybody else in the middle is covered, zone area. Mayhew is trying to cover pool one-on-one, and that's where Hole found the weakness in the defense, and they almost picked up the first down. Ball is at the 49-yard line. Hole throwing, and Sharp does not hold onto the ball at the 35-yard line of this fourth down, and again, the punting team comes sprinting out onto the field. Jim, when you go across the middle against this Florida State defensive secondary, you know you're going to take a shot. And that time, Sharp, that ball hit him in the hands. He dropped it. O'Connor. And going back deep is Curtis Thomas. Remember, Deion Saunders hurt his wrist. And O'Connor puts that out inside the 20-yard line. FSU by 21 points. Abbreviation of ESPN every Seminole parties nightly. <laughs> they do too here. First down from the 22 yard line. Jim Ferguson remains your quarterback. Here comes Victor Floyd, well over 100 yards, but he's not going to get 100 yards here, but he does pick up some yardage. About three out near the 25 yard line. Thursday night at 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific. And you know that the winning coach of all time, Eddie Robinson, is the coach down there. And then next Saturday night, Paul and I will be down in College Station, Texas, for the second time in three weeks. Arkansas, which bounced Baylor today from the unbeaten ranks of the Southwest, pretty Saturday night, and that will be a good one. From the 25-yard line, second down, and seven to go. Florida State leading by 21. Split back, so you'd think pass. Here comes Ferguson to throw. Ferguson throws, and that is not caught by Victor Floyd, who kind of weaved in toward the middle of the field and then back out toward the sideline where the ball was thrown. And it is third down. I'm watching this defense. 
You said something at the beginning of the game about the South Carolina fire ants. And what they do is that they're taught to do. No matter where that ball is at the end of the play, all 11 players have to be there. Now, that pass was thrown down to Victor Floyd down at the other 40-yard line. The defense turned, even though it was incomplete, and went down there. We're going to try and show the people at the end of a play, Jim, how they do that. Here we got a timeout on the field called by Florida State. Florida State calls timeout. Here's Ferguson, who is four out of five, and of the four he has completed, two have gone for touchdowns, each to a tight end. Florida State, 21, South Carolina, nothing. Out here. In this position, third and long, third and about seven from the 25. And the backs are split. Bottom and then floor to the backs. And look at this. Ferguson winds up seated at the 20 yard line. And that means he'll have to kick the ball away. He never got away from the center. He just trips and falls here, Jim. He still looked like the center might have stepped on his foot as he came out. Held on the football. He is down in college football. And now for the second time, Lewis Berry comes back to kick, and he's calling for time. And I think that's their second time out within moments here. They're leading 21 to nothing, but he was counting the men. I think he only had 10 men on the field and needs an 11th man out there. Let me count. Two, he only four, has six, ten. eight, ten. That's right. And the guy that goes in now is going to get chewed out. That's and that's Jones, a senior. Yeah, he's just walking out now. <laughs> All right. This is the way they were a year ago and then again this year. That's South Carolina. Ranked third, third, 13th. This year, 23rd. Pass offense, 33rd. And now 54th. The bottom line is right down at the bottom. Ninth last year in total offense and 29th this year. Defensively, look at the difference. 47th against the rush to 71st. They picked up and pass defense because I think the people are running the ball on them. And total defense from 47th to 60th. Okay, here we go. Barry to kick the ball away. Dunlap is the man deep, and he's going to let that go widely. And it's going to go just inside the 40-yard line. 8.15 to go in the first half. 21 to nothing, Florida State. And that's see what South Carolina can get going here. 